before you call any baby small, you must understand the science behind the birth. This video is especially for clinicians who manage such patients frequently. Hi, here to break down small for gestational age and fetal growth restriction using guidance from FIBO, ACUG Practice Bulletin 227, RCUG Green Top Guidance 31. So let's begin. What are SGA and FGR? As per international guidelines, SGA means fetal weight below the 10th percentile. But many SGA babies are constitutionally small and healthy. FGR, however, is when the fetus fails to reach its growth potential, usually due to placental insufficiency. This carries significant perinatal risks. So how we diagnose with accurate dating? Because every percentile depends upon it. Next is interval growth. In India, a fundal height lag of more than 2 to 3 cm after 24 weeks should prompt ultrasound evaluation. Ultrasound includes estimated fetal weight, abdominal circumference, head circumference, femoral length and amniotic fluid. We classify early FGR below 32 weeks and late FGR after 32 weeks. Late FGR often looks normal but shows flattening of abdominal circumference growth even before Doppler changes. So what should be the monitoring plan? Monitoring is guided by RCOG and FIBO recommendations. Clinically, we measure fundal height every two weeks and encourage daily fetal movement counts where mother should feel at least 10 movements across 12 waking hours. A practical Indian recommendation. Ultrasound monitoring includes interval growth every two weeks, umbilical artery Doppler, MCA and CPR when indicated. An NST should be done weekly if Dopplers are normal but growth is slow. No Doppler changes but growth lagging. What should we do? When Dopplers are normal, late FGR can still progress at least. We intensify observation with weekly NST, fortnightly growth scans, regular AFI checks, maternal blood pressure, hemoglobin and sugar monitoring. Close attention to maternal perception of movements also are very important. Now coming to the evidence-based interventions, what can we do? So interventions supported by FIGO and WHO nutrition guidelines include L-arginine supplementation shown in studies to improve placental blood flow in selected FGR cases, balanced protein supplementation, micronutrient correction include iron, folate and vitamin D, low dose aspirin before 16 weeks for women at high risk for placental dysfunction, anemia correction, optimizing maternal glucose if diabetic and ensuring adequate rest, hydration and small frequent meals. As per ACOG and RCOG, SGA with normal Dopplers delivery can be conducted at around 38 to 39 weeks. FGR with abnormal Dopplers timing depends upon severity. Absent endoscopic flow usually at 30 to 34 weeks and reversal of endoscopic flow even earlier once steroids and magnesium are given. Mode of delivery is individualized, vaginal delivery is safe when Dopplers are normal and NST is reassuring. Caesarean is preferred if Dopplers worsen fetal reserve is low or estimated fetal weight is extremely low. So early identification, guideline based monitoring and timely delivery save lives. Share this with every clinician who manages high risk pregnancies. Thank you.